All right, so what's up YouTube? This is going to be my first video and probably last because I don't really want to be on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> I just came on here to share my testimony um, of how Jesus saved me <clears throat> or delivered me from porn and masturbation. So if y'all haven't noticed, um, I would say the, the big technology companies are attempting to um, make more people, you know, look at porn and masturbation. For example, if you go on Instagram under a celebrity's post or, yeah, mostly the celebrities, the ones with large um, followings, you'll see the the bots you know saying a bunch of nonsense under the, the photos you know saying don't click on my photo y'all you know, know what i'm talking about if you if you know if you use instagram right um i think starting in 2018 they started even pushing the bots towards um the playstation network um because prior to 2017 i never saw any um bots promoting pornography but now like yeah, prior to 2018, yeah. So in 2018, I started <clears throat> seeing, I believe, yeah, I mean, it was essentially the same type of comments, like don't click here, 18 plus. I mean, and this is, you could imagine the damage that's doing to the young men in America. But I would say my issue started around, I was like 12 or 13, this was back, I'm 25 now, I don't, how long ago was that? Probably 2008 or nine, I think. I was 12, no, 2000 and, I don't, I think it was 2008 or nine, right? But that's when it started, right? So, you know, like most young men, you see something on the internet you're not supposed to see or you hear your, Stupid friend saying, oh, you should go try this. You probably shouldn't try it, right? But I think from 12 to 15, I was doing it like, like it, without a care in the world, thinking nothing was wrong with it, right? Now, <clears throat> I've, I've always believed in God. Um, I never doubted his existence because my mother has been saved since she was 17. And if you know what I mean by being saved, that means being saved, fulfilled with the Holy Ghost. You know, God speaks to her when, um, when there are important issues to be discussed. Um, you know, she'll see dreams, visions, yada, yada, yada. Um, but on, and when I, like, if you're an atheist watching this, the best, analogy that I can explain for what it means to be, well, not, not filled with the Holy Ghost, but to experience living with someone with the, who is filled with the Holy Ghost. Imagine having this 10 digit string of uh, numbers in your head that you've only mentioned inside of your head. You haven't wrote it down. You haven't, yeah, you haven't told anybody, right? And imagine the person who is filled with the Holy Ghost says, God said, stop worrying about that string of letters. And she tells you, and or the person tells you the specific set of numbers um, that you were worried about, right? That's, that's not normal. That's clearly God, right? Now, there are, you can be deceived by evil spirits because evil spirits can talk to people, right? This is why when you see um, people who are addicted to like drugs, um, or like, you know, heroin, they take hard drugs like that. They'll be like, oh, I saw, you know, this evil looking thing standing in the corner. I saw dogs trying to bite me. That's not, clearly that's not happening in the physical realm, but it's happening in the spiritual, right? So, um, so that's what I mean when it, when, you know, like my reasons for believing in God have nothing to do with, oh, well, the Bible sounds nice and it fits my lifestyle, I'm gonna be a Christian. Like, no, like 
yeah, the Bible sounds nice now that I think about it, but that's not my reason for being a Christian, right? So, um, yeah, so from 12 to 15, I was doing that nonsense, right? And I think one day my mother was like, come here, I need to talk to you, right? And at that point, I was like, oh, crap. I know I didn't do anything, right? But it has to be about the stupid porn and the masturbation, right? And she was like, God showed me, she was like, I had a vision. God showed me that you were naked, right? Um, and nakedness in the Bible means that you are, yeah, full of shame. Like it represents to that, I think, I was just praying. Like after she had told me that, I think I went and prayed. I was like, God, forgive me. I probably shouldn't have did that, you know, blah, 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 right? And then I go to sleep that night and I was in the living room at this point. And this is the first, this is when the first time that I experienced sleep paralysis. And if you don't know what sleep paralysis is, sleep, sleep paralysis is um, you can find thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of videos of people talking about it. Um, but it's essentially when your sleep is disturbed, your spirit is awake, but your physical body is asleep. So you you know you can't control your your physical body because it's not awake, um, and you have no control over your somatic nervous system. So you can't move your eyes because your eyes are controlled by muscles. If you know what I mean, and you can't like you can't if. If your eyes are out of focus, well, you're not gonna be able to focus them because there are muscles that control your, the contraction and dilation of your eyes. So when you're in that state, everything is not so clear, but you can still see what's going on, right? So I wake up and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna end up editing this video and including the images and the videos that I've used and um, that I'm gonna mention. So I, I wake up and I see this evil, I mean, it was a it was a demon or evil spirit, same thing. Um, you know, stand, well, I think, I don't know if it was standing, I would say sitting in front of me because I was laying on my back. Um, you know, and looking at me like with this evil smile and I'm gonna show you how it, exactly the smile, is it this, if I'm, um, so I'm gonna edit this video and then put a clip, but, the closest thing that I can get to the description of how it looked is when Saitama, this is an anime, so One Punch Man, Saitama versus, I think his name is like Centuro, but that face, I'm gonna put it in the clip, is exact, like, exactly what I saw, but imagine that him in real life, you, like you ever see SpongeBob and they go into super detail and it looks creepy, like imagine that, that, that face in real life, right? And his the skin color of it was like brownish green. It was like a like you know it was filthy. Like it looked filthy. I mean, it says in the Bible that um, evil spirits defile. I think the flesh or something. But you know they're filthy. Um, and it, I think it was sort of like a female ish looking evil spirit. But while well, it's sitting in front of me. It, I mean, it had, I'm not trying to be graphic, but it had both of its hands. And it, I, I, I believe it was my spiritual set of genitals to, I mean, to be, to be honest, like it had both of its hand. I'm, yeah, I'm just be real stroking, stroking my spiritual set of genitals and I could feel, feel it. Right. And I woke up and I'm seeing this thing smiling at me in this evil manner, and I'm, I'm like, I fear starts to grip me, and I and I wake up out of it, right? And at that point, when I was, I think it was 15, yeah, 15, like I didn't, I thought it was a dream, right? So, fast forward to, I think to when I was 19, and I was entering college. I was going to community college at this point in time, but I think this is when I started realizing like, okay, this is becoming a problem and I'm starting to get annoyed. Um, because it was, I mean, it's, having to have that stupid feeling coming over you, that aroused feeling like, oh, I wanna have sex. Like that's, it became annoying, right? 
but I don't think the hatred for it came just yet. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully I don't forget anything. Oh, before that. So, and this is other time. And again, my mother has been saved since she was 17. She's, she, at that point in time, she was like 41 at the most, I think. 40 or 41. No, like 40. No, she was like 44. I don't remember. But I think we're coming back from church one day. And again, you know that feeling when, oh, you got to go relieve yourself. That feeling came over me and... She started praying, like, you know, speaking in tongues, I bind up, she was like, you know, I bind up every lustful spirit, you know, and that same conviction feeling that I was feeling when she first told me, you know, what the devil was trying to do and with the nakedness, and I'm gonna mention the nakedness part again um, later. Um, that same conviction I was feeling again, right? So let's fast forward to when I'm 19 and I'm entering college. So I was uh, attending a community college, right? To get my associate's degree. So when I'm going to school, I think one day, cause this is the point where I started trying to get annoyed and I was praying to God like, oh God, you gotta do something. Um, because I didn't know what to do. Um, but I, I remember having this dream and I was surrounded in water. And this voice, it's not a physical voice. It's like the voice that you hear in your head when you're speaking and when you read it like silently. But you know that you're not the one that initiates that voice. That's what it means by when people say, you know, God's speaking to them, right? Um, but it was like, because at this point I was, you know, praying a lot like after... You know, I would, you know, do the stupid, look at the porn and the masturbation. I'd be like, oh God, forgive me, you know, like, I don't know what to do, right? And I had a dream, I was in water and I was like, oh, the voice was like, I, I believe it was God. He was like, no matter the year, month, week, day, um, minute, seconds, you, you know, he was counting down in these different time categories. You know, as I, I, he was like, I hear you, right? And then I think, I don't know how long after that, but I was going to school and I hopped on the public bus and there was this dude, like he was a black dude. And he, he was like, you believe in the Bible? I was like, yeah. And he pulled out an orange. When you see those orange small Bibles, but he was like, when you read this, this this will give you strength. And he was like, um, when you pray for others, pray for me. He was like, because my weakness is women. So he was like, when you pray for yourself, pray for me because my weakness is women. And I was like, okay. And then he told me his name. Like, this is a weird part. He told me his name and he had like the, the strangest name that I have ever heard. Like, I don't, I honestly don't even, I think if like, if God told me, yeah, that was an angel, like I wouldn't be surprised because his name was, I've never heard his name before. Like it didn't sound African. It didn't sound... Like, oh, no, Japanese name. Like, oh, this must be, like, it was like Johnson, but with an S, but it wasn't. Like, and I know you hear that, and it's like, what? Like, it makes no sense. Like, I know, it doesn't make sense. Like, he, he just had a strange name. And I know, I think it says somewhere in the Bible that there are heavenly names that nobody has heard. I could be wrong. I probably heard that in a testimony. I don't really remember, but... um yeah, um, yeah, so that happened when I was 19. I think after I got a Bible, I started reading that. But I started to grow even more annoyed and started growing a hatred for, you know, the porn and the masturbation because it became really annoying. So, and I think at that point I was 20, I was 20, I think I had just turned 20. Two. Yeah, I had just turned 22. Um, yeah, because it was January 2018 when I moved into the dorm, right? Now, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. Yeah, so I moved into a dorm, right? 
Now imagine you being a crackhead and you're trying to uh, um, become sober and your roommate is a crack dealer. Like how the hell does that work, right? But Okay, yeah, I was talking about my roommate, Um, but yeah, he would have girls over his room every other week. And then there was other dude, probably twice as worse as him. Um, that was just around me, right? And I look back at that and I was the devil trying to be, you know, slick. Like, oh, I'm going to put these, you know, bad influences into his life to try and derail him, right? Terrible influences, right? So I think at this point, um, I... I think so what was I so was I yeah so I I'm in my dorm and I think one day I was on I think I was on Google and I was like I wonder what's the effects because I'm a, a gra I graduated with the health science bachelor's in health science right so I took a lot of classes about biology immunology human physiology about stuff like that right so I was one day, I was just on Google. It's like, I wonder what the effects of sex has on the body. And then there was this lecture that popped up from this Christian university. I don't know the, the name of the university, but it was a lady that was lecturing. And the colors of the university is purple. I don't know if it's TCU or some other university. I don't remember, right? And there was another video that I was watching. I think the, there was another video. I'm gonna I'm a probably put a short clip in this, but that I was watching. And after watching those videos, I was like, oh, so it kind of had this like epiphany, like, oh, like that's the purpose of sex. Oh, that's why you should worry for marriage, right? And not just be out here, you know, with just any random girl because when you have sex with other um, people, there and you, it's not under God. Like you, there, you do transfer spirits. Okay, so just to point that out. But yeah, I watched those videos. I was just like, okay, oh, and but some of the, one of the videos that I was watching, she was explaining about the uh, reward pathway in the brain and how dopamine gets released, and there are certain brain structures that are involved. Um, but after that, I was like, okay, God destroyed the, this is exactly the prayer that I said. I said, God destroyed the neurological pathways that I have created in my brain that have allowed me to feel the way that I do, you know, at random times, right? So, and I was like, Jesus name, amen, right? So I go to bed and I think a week later, it took a, literally like five days before I realized it. And I was like, wait, like, I haven't had no urges to masturbate or look at porn or none of that, right? No urges. Um, and I was like, okay, you know? And then I think, because I didn't realize it, and then I think God was like, all right, I'm going to show him that, yeah. you're Now you're going to know that you're delivered, right? So... But at this point, I don't think the evil spirit was out. I think God just sort of broke the the access to the, my body that he that the evil spirit had, right? And my theory about the whole evil spirit thing is I think when an evil spirit inhabits your body, you sort of give it control over certain aspects of your body. And this is why it's able to inflict damage um, onto you. So like evil spirits can cause certain diseases that's what the Bible says. Um, but yeah, and, and if you think about it, when the, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will indwell in you, right? And um, the, you know, the body is the, the, the temple of God, like don't mess it up, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That makes sense because the spirit is inside of you. And so it probably feels, so this is why when you feel conviction, if you're saved and you feel with the Holy Spirit, it's probably why you feel a, a, a certain, probably certain uh, heightened level of conviction, right? Because 
that feeling is essentially just hormones running through your body that's being released so if the holy spirit has access to your endocrine system if he wants to make you feel convicted there's probably some hormones involved with that right um because there's definitely hormones involved like when you feel aroused there are hormones that are being released right for i know oxytocin is one hormone that's released in females when they have sex right or when they start getting uh, you know aroused but um so yeah I, at that point i think god had just you know broken the the access to my I, he still had access but he didn't have control over my endocrine system right and so i think later on that week i was sleeping this is like this is like two three in the afternoon and it was you know bright out like i could um yeah, I could see everything in my room. It was not dark because when and when sleep paralysis happens, you know that nothing is like super clear, but you can still see what's going on. But at this point in time, I had a sermon playing. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put. A, I'm gonna put the exact clip that I heard. Hopefully, it doesn't get copyrighted, and YouTube gives an excuse to remove this video because then I'm gonna re-upload it. But. I had this sermon plan and right at the point where he starts talking about um i bind up every lustful spirit um spirit of masturbation deliverance and renunciation of sexual sin i renounce all sexual sin that i've been involved with in the past including fornication masturbation pornography perversion fantasy and adultery in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of adultery, perversion, fornication, lust, incest, rape. Pornography, like, and it took a second before me to realize, like, oh, I'm having sleep paralysis. But my ears started to, like, I got started to listen intently to what the dude was saying on my phone. And as soon as he started saying that, my mouth literally, like, this is like some exorcism type, <laughs> type prep. My mouth opened as wide as it could. I'm gonna put a, a clip of, and this is this this boondock clip is quite literally what exactly what happened, but without the you know theatrical you know stuff moving around. Um, this white it was literally clear. Like you hear I wanted you to immediately rock it. Do you hear me? Ever seen Casper? That's exactly what it, you know, was looking like. This thing literally came out my mouth, and then it it went up into the ceiling, and it did it for like five. I mean, it was super long. Like it came out my mouth, and then made this like weird, like cinnamon. Like it it bundled bundled up in like a, a, a like a circle, like a cinnamon bun type shape. I don't know why it did that. I literally don't know why. After that, I woke up and I was like, oh, God just delivered me from this spirit. Like, what the heck? And I'm looking in my bathroom like, where is that? Right? Like, I'm, like I can see into the spirit world, which I can't. But, you know, after that, I was happy, right? And so I think the very next day, um, I'm sleeping, right? And this has never happened before. I'm sleeping and I'm having a dream that I'm having sex with some random woman, right? And when you're having a dreams like that, it's completely demonic. Like that's it's completely demonic, um, right? And and what ends up happening is I end, I end up having not and this has never happened before. I end up having nocturnal emissions. So that's when you ejaculate in your sleep, right? That's what happened, right? So I wake up angry, sad, like, what the heck, God, I thought you, you know, delivered me, right? But again, the devil will, you'll experience stuff like that um, if you've indulged in that in your previous life, sinful life. Um, but the devil's not going to attack you if you, you know, you're sinning willfully, right? I wasn't sinning willfully, so the devil's like, all right, I'm going to just, I'm going to mess with him now because... I'm no longer in his body. Now I'm just messing with him, right? So that happened. And then I don't, 
I think this the sleep paralysis started occurring more frequently. I would I would be sleeping and it would feel like something's grabbing my arm or or holding me down. Or I would wake up hear stuff tapping behind my bed. Um and I know one there was one night <laughs> I was so used to it. I woke up and it felt like something was grabbing my arm, right? And I had my shirt off, right? So I wake up, turn on the flash on my phone, and I'm looking at my arm, and my arm is like red, like something was literally grabbing my arm. Um, and obviously it's not physical, it's spiritual, so I think what whatever they do to you spiritually, it can affect you physically. Um, and that makes sense. Um, But yeah, um, that happened. And then I think I, I ended up going back to sleep. And then like 10 minutes later, it occurs again. I think at that point, I was like, like literally telling the spirit, like, you're annoying. You're, 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 you're not scaring me. And then it was another night when I was sleeping where it, the, literally, the, the, I mean, it was, a demon, it was a demon literally grabbing my leg, like shaking me. And I woke up like, yo, like what? Like, what's going on? I mean, and what's so weird, I don't know if when when that happened, but there was also a time where for like two, three weeks when I was um, at the university in that dorm, I was limping for like some random reason. I know I, I didn't do any super hard workout, but I ended up, I don't know if it was because of that incident, but I did have pain in my foot for like two, three weeks and I had to end up living, but it ended up going away. Um, I don't know where that pain came from. It could have been, you know, because of that, but I don't know. But um, what else happened? Oh, so now back to my roommates. And I was mentioning, how I was, remember how I was mentioning earlier where my mother was telling me, yeah, uh, God showed her that I was naked and he was trying to shame me. Um, I had a dream. It wasn't a dream, it was a vision, my bad. Um, I was sleeping and and I knew it was a vision because the my when you have sleep, this is, I think this was sleep paralysis, but my room, I, I saw my room and like the, the wall that's usually, the wall that I was staring at literally like disappeared and I could see my roommate standing in the common area, like literally just naked and smiling in this evil manner, right? And, and me being a male, I'm just looking like, ew, like what, what am I looking at? You know, and I think that was just God's warning like, yo, Stay away from him. Don't don't hang around him. Right at that point, I didn't get it, you know. But um, and there was this other. I think I think I mentioned the other dude who was probably worse than him. But yeah, um, and yeah, that happened. Um, uh, what else? Yeah. So so that and and the when the evil spirit left, I think that was. October 2018. Yeah, October 2018. And I haven't, yeah, so since then, and then I'm gonna talk about some other experiences. And then after leaving that dorm and then moving out to a, a different apartment near the campus, um, my new apartment, slightly off campus, um, I still had some attacks going on. Um, I had one night where it, you know, evil spirit again, try and disrupt my sleep and scare me, come face to face with me. Um, and again, when that happens, if that ever happens to y'all, just try and say, Jesus. They are literally, it says in the Bible, they tremble in fear. And every time I would scream Jesus, it, you know, it would just stop. The sleep paralysis would completely stop. Um, there was another time where I was sleeping and I could feel like, I could see sleep paralysis was occurring and I could see this darkness just standing by my bed and you can feel it. Like, I can't explain it to you how you can uh, feel darkness, right? But 
there was also another time I felt like something was standing behind me. Like, it was just, you know, the Bible says you're going to be persecuted. You're going to go through troubles in this life for being a Christian. You're going to be, you know, hated by all nations for, for my name's sake. But when, when you choose Jesus and the Bible, you're going to be attacked. I mean, that's just, you know, what it is, you know, like... <laughs> That's just what it is, right? And you can pray against it and prayer does work. But yeah. Um